Hello, Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors. And this week's contract tip has to do with repairs. So if you have ever been in any of my classes, you have repeatedly heard me say that nothing is an issue until it's an issue. Repairs inevitably become an issue from the time they are negotiated through to the time that a buyer is ready to close on a property. So a couple of tips on repairs just to bring back to the forefront of your attention as you are dealing with buyers and sellers and negotiating for contracts. Number one, if you are working with a seller and you go on a listing, if there are obvious repairs that need to be done, go ahead and address those with the sellers then. Um, at some point they are going to come up in any offer, in any contract, and a seller more than likely will have to address those issues. So as the listing agent, go ahead and, and address those issues on the listing appointment and take care of things that obviously need to be taken care of at that point. Same hand if you're working with a buyer. When you are working with a buyer and you're showing a property that is, and there are obvious repair issues, don't leave those issues up for a, a due diligence potential negotiation during the due diligence time. Go ahead and address those repair issues in the purchase and sale agreement while you're negotiating the offer in and of itself right up front don't leave those open for uh, the buyer and seller to address again during the due diligence time frame but that being said let's say that the buyer and seller are under contract and the buyer is in the middle of their due diligence time frame which we know means they are simply deciding are they going to exercise their option of continuing on with the contract or are they going to take the option of terminating the contract? That's all the due diligence buyer's right to terminate period is. However, for a buyer to be 100% satisfied with going through with the contract, one of the options that many buyers choose to do is to have an independent home inspection and have the home inspected. <laughs> During that time frame is also the time frame for a buyer to ask a seller to address any potential issues or concerns with the property. A lot of those are repair issues. And um, as you negotiate through the repair issues, if there are repair issues that a buyer does want a seller to address with the property, please Please, please, again, nothing is an issue until it's an issue. Please, you be the professional real estate agent and anticipate a potential issue at closing in how you write up the amendment, or again, if it's in the offer, if you're doing it that time, to for the seller to address these repairs. Nothing is worse than you do a walkthrough day before closing, three days before closing, five days before closing, and the repair items the seller had agreed to do they're not done. That, that sours the whole uh, transaction, much less there are obligations there for, for the seller to do it if they agreed to do it. Um, and we just want everything, you can anticipate this in advance to, to counteract, cut off this issue in, in advance. There are special several special stipulations that you may use. <coughs> Excuse me one of them and i will actually print this verbiage below is from one of our affiliated closing attorneys so it is written by an attorney and please when you're addressing repair issues here is i want you to pay attention to this um, special stipulation all parties agree that the repair work contemplated and agreed upon herein shall be completed not less than five business days prior to the closing dated of blank, whatever your closing date is. All work shall be completed by vendors licensed in the state of Georgia through the proper state licensing board to complete the work required herein. Sellers shall provide to buyer at least five days prior to closing evidence of vendors licensed to do repair work, invoices and paid receipts for all work completed, should seller not complete the work required herein at least five days in advance of closing, buyer shall have the right to either one, immediately hire vendors of buyer's choice and have the work completed at the seller's expense to be paid at time of closing from the seller's proceeds, or two, terminate the contract agreement with full refund of all earnest money deposits. And again, thank you to Amy Davis of Davis & Associates for helping us with the wording of that special stipulation. 
There are other special stipulations already pre-printed in both sets of your contract packages. For example, here's a great one from the RE special steps, uh, forms packages. The parties agree that the repairs the seller has agreed to complete under the contract may not be complete as of the date of closing. In that event, no later than blank days after closing, which is going to be called the repair completion date, seller shall complete all repairs to the property herein. It is understood and agreed that the seller, in showing of good faith, shall deposit at closing X amount of dollars, which we're calling the repair funds, with blank, the security holder, as security for completion of said repairs. As long as the seller completes or causes to complete all repairs no later than midnight of the repair completion date, the repair fund shall be returned to the seller within blank number of days of the repair completion date or submission of proof of the repairs to buyer, whichever comes first. Should the seller, seller fail to timely complete said repairs, buyer shall be entitled to repair funds as liquidated damages. Should a dispute arise as to uh, what, what happens if there is a dispute over the repair funds, then the holder of the repair funds can follow along the dispute as with any, uh, any other dispute with any security escrow deposits for the contract. There are other special stipulations. The GAR contract, for example, has um, special stipulation 310, repair of defects not found due to seasonal items. Special stipulation 312, repair or replace nine nine named items after closing. Seller's obligation survives. Special stipulation 314, repairs by seller after the loan approval, extend closing date. Special stipulation 316, repairs paid by seller, limit on cost. And the RE forms package has additional uh, special stipulations discussing this issue of repairs. Seller to have cost limitations for negotiated repairs. Seller to make negotiated repairs after closing date. Seller to make repairs after buyer loan approval. Anyway, my point is this, you as an agent, when you are writing up repair issues, whether it be in the actual purchase and sale agreement or in an amendment to address concerns, amendment during the due diligence time frame, make sure that you address what happens, the time frame when they're supposed to be complete, how they are supposed to be completed, for example, by a licensed contractor or not, and what happens if they are not complete, make sure you give those time frames, obligations, and consequences right up front when you are addressing those issues. Don't wait to try and figure that out one day, three days, morning of closing when it really will become a huge issue. So hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education.